Hey there, humans. I'm going to open this video with a quick reminder, which I think should kind of go without saying on a channel like this, but occasionally I feel the need to say it. You're about to see me making some modifications to some food heating appliances and giving a few tips about doing so. However, every one of these devices is going to be different. I'm only going to be showing a couple here. So if you're going to attempt a project like this, you're about to become fully dependent upon that squishy business that should be floating around somewhere up in your skull there. If you do not understand the workings of your appliance, do not do this. If you've ever felt that anyone else is responsible for you, do not do this. Don't do this for someone else, as inevitably, next time their house burns down, they're going to blame you. So, with that out of the way, let's continue trying to improve civilization by taking life into our own hands. Hey, welcome back everybody. I have just picked up this lovely Whirlpool 24 inch wall oven. As you may or may not have noticed, it has become very expensive these days to pick up any sort of wall oven, so I'm going to use it. But first, some experiments here. I'm going to try to improve the efficiency a bit. Not that that should be significantly different from a new one, though. They're using the same technology. The electric heating element has not really improved. Uh, the only difference would be a modern oven might have a convection option, which is a fan. Look at that, a wiring diagram right on the side. Lovely and simple. Imagine the possibilities. Anyway, the experiment. For that experiment, I should leave the temperature knob set here at about 350 for the duration. I will not touch it between the two tests I'm going to run. And I'll switch the switch as quickly to bake as I possibly can. And I got the handy dandy power meter here and as you can see the clock mechanism on there is already drawing 1.2 watts but I'll zero it out each time so I'm going to first test it in standard and I'll measure how long it takes to get up to 350 degrees and let it continue and see how much energy it uses for the next half hour after getting those numbers We'll take off the top here, which should be very easy on this model, and see if I can improve the insulation slightly. Zeroed out the watt meter, and we'll turn it on and start the clock. If you could see the wiring diagram there, you saw the bake element we're using was rated at 2200 watts, and we're fairly close to that. It has just switched off for the first time, took about 9 minutes and about 351 watt hours to get up to 350 degrees. So after holding its temperature of 350 Fahrenheit for 30 minutes at that mark it has used 549 watt hours. So it used about 200 just under to hold the temperature for a half an hour. So I will now let that cool all the way to room temperature. Alright, this thing is almost cooled off, so I'm going to go ahead and take the lid off of it, which is all I'll need to do to get into this one, I think. Yours may not be so easy. I must say that while this thing was in operation, it was almost cold on the outside which uh, differs a bit from some newer units that I've felt. Now having, of course, turned the power off, remove the lid. And you can see why the outside was so cold. They made an effort. Nice. So it looks like there's no room for improvement on the sides of this within its current shell. And the back is packed pretty well tightly as well. But the top, where heat tends to go, I'm told, 
has lots of room here. But what we will want to do is keep all the wiring on the outside of the insulation so as not to overheat that. So I think I'll have to detach this wire loom right here to get a bit of slack to stuff some insulation in the top here. All right, that has given me plenty of slack in the wiring to keep it above any added insulation. And what we will be using for that is perfect application for these scraps of Roxel building insulation. This stuff works much better than fiberglass at installing tiny scraps and obtaining a pretty tight fit without compacting it too much. It's higher density and it's just easier to fit in small pieces like this and it withstands higher temperatures up to about 2100 degrees Fahrenheit which is why it's what I used for my outdoor wood stove which you can check out at the link that should be appearing on the screen any moment now now there is a pretty tight fit without being compacted and it perfectly used up my bag of scraps here that if they were any other building insulation, would have been just about useless. But I paid particular attention not to pack it into the controls here, and in improving this rear corner joint here between the existing side and top insulation was kind of open there. So I think this has got to achieve some kind of result. Now let's see if it was worthwhile. Off we go. Notice it's drawing more power slightly than rated because the voltage is higher than the rating. Wow! Almost exactly the same preheat time and energy. Let's see how it holds up over the next 30 minutes. Well, as we come up to the mark here, it looks like that has used almost exactly the same amount of power. Slightly less, but hardly worth it. So it looks like, in this case, the manufacturer used the correct amount of insulation. As I said, this oven feels almost cold on the sides when in operation. You do feel heat coming off yours there might be potential for improvement. So, no significant gains there, but your results may vary. So the thing was well made. But next question, how does that compare to the energy consumption of the way we've been doing it so far? The Toast Monster. Since we're usually just making a frozen pizza anyway, am I right? I would guess that this product is more likely to be lacking in insulation. So, while it is smaller than the real oven here, let's see how much energy it uses to perform the same task and run the same test on it as the other. It is drawing almost exactly half the power at an instant. But the thing is, how long will that element have to remain on during this period to keep it at 350. And also this single pane door has got to be grossly inefficient compared with this one, which I did check also has insulation inside the body of it, in addition to its double pane window that you can still touch while in operation. So this one appears to be allowing air to pass between the inner and outer shells and vent out the back in order to keep the outside from getting too hot, which is still getting pretty hot. That can't be too efficient. There we go. It took this thing about 15 and a half minutes to get to temperature. And, uh, for being so much smaller, awfully close to the same total energy to get up to temperature, 293 watt hours versus about 350 on the real oven. Now let's see what it takes altogether to maintain that for an additional 30 minutes.
and 30 minutes later it has used roughly 10 percent more energy in total to bring it up to temperature and hold it there for a half an hour than the real oven and if we do the subtractions and such that amounts to over 50 percent more energy for the keeping it at the temperature for a half an hour part as it is we'd be better off just using the big old oven all the time but let's see how we can improve this one here comes the back off the toast monster certainly no insulation in there there's a window for the light. I could get a bulb for that while I'm at it. But hell, we'll see what happens. Give me some slack. So upon closer inspection, we actually have insulation in the top and the one side here. But for some reason, stopping well short of the corner. But nothing in the back, nothing in the bottom. Bottom's not terribly important, but nothing in the back, and nothing on this side over here. Possibly to prolong the life of the convection fan blower unit down here. But I am certainly not too concerned about that at this point. But I will compromise here. I'm going to insulate the rear half of this behind the convection circulation enclosure there and allow the motor to still get a bit of air. But I cannot uh, figure a reason why there would be no insulation in the back other than not wanting to do a proper lamp enclosure. I don't know. But I haven't had a bulb in this thing quite some time. Not too worried about it. Let's see if I can make this thing more efficient. So there it is, stuffed right thoroughly, firmly but not too tightly, for after all, insulation is about trapping air. So if you compress it, it will reduce its effectiveness. I even peeled the bottom down and stuffed that. Went a bit around the convection ducting there, but left space down here for the motor to breathe a bit. Unfortunately, we're still going to suffer huge heat losses from this single pane door. Could I make a door of improved efficiency for this device? Absolutely. It just slides onto these pins like this. Will I ever get around to doing that project? Of course not. Especially when I own this wonderful new Whirlpool. And hey, if you don't like the avocado, this shell comes right off. Get some black appliance epoxy, spray paint that, slap it back on, it's a brand new oven. But anyway, here we go. Burning up our toaster oven in the name of science so you don't have to. Off we go. There is over a three minute improvement in preheat time. Twelve and a half minutes versus previous fifteen and a half. Significantly less energy. As I recall, we were near 300 watt hours last time. We're only 235 now. Then after 30 minutes of maintaining temperature at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, hugely satisfying results this time. 383 watt hours and there's the end of it versus 607 last time so to go over the numbers here again uh, the top row being the old oven the real oven and the bottom row being the toast monster here's our first run the toast monster used nearly as much power as the large oven to preheat and then even more power in total Maintain that temperature for 30 minutes afterward. And after the insulation, where there was hardly any improvement in the regular oven, on the Toast Monster, it is now significantly less and uses barely more than it took to preheat 
the larger oven for the entire process. So now it makes sense to cook a pizza in this thing. Well, obviously insulating this entire back surface was a good deal of improvement. I believe there was more than that going on here to see such significant numbers. I think that what I did additionally here was to stop the airflow around the interior of this device with the stuffings I did. And in, in this corner here, I stuffed some down this corner, which also would improve the effectiveness of the fiberglass bats that were on the top and side already, the top being the most important. But I think what, what could happen before the stuffing is that fiberglass has a very definite grain where it resists airflow in this direction. It does not sideways so much. Air can flow pretty easily sideways. And with all of the edges of those bats left uncapped as they did, going to great lengths to leave them uncapped by leaving them short of the corner here for some reason, I believe there was a lot of airflow going sideways along the grain of the insulation originally. And one more thing of note, I watched both times after this came up to temperature the first time, after it shut off, after the preheat, the first time the heating element clicked back on again after only about three minutes, and the second time took about nine. So there, tremendous improvement to the Toast Monster, making it a worthwhile appliance for your countertop with just the leftovers from Roxol building insulation such as this. So, can you improve the efficiency of your electric oven? Well, nice old whirlpool built when people cared about building things? Not so much. Your modern oven? Maybe. I'm not sure. I need to take one of those apart. The Toast Monster? Absolutely. So I will put this back in use, and I will post an update if anything happens to it as a result of my stuffings. Please do like this video if you liked it and post any comments or questions you have down below. Go visit my channel page where I have all kinds of different content and if you like any of that sort of thing please do subscribe. It'll keep you up to date on my video postings, it'll help get my content out there and it won't cost you a thing. Thanks for watching.